2026 just started and yet another fire in a nightclub, this time in Switzerland. This event took many lives, injured so many people, and today I want to comment on it. I'm Professor Rino from New Zealand, and my research focus on uh, fire evacuation. I've been doing research in this field for over 10 years, and today I want to give you a bit of an overview of what happened in this uh, really nasty event. I want to disclose that this is not an official investigation. By all means, uh, this material cannot be used for an official investigation. We need to have uh, more solid data. All the information that I managed to retrieve are from the internet, so it's a disclosure that you need to be aware of. I try to make this video to provide some more educational material because there is a lot of science behind the fire and evacuation dynamics. So I want to share with the white public what we know and how we can use instruments to run future investigation and forensic analysis to fully understand what just happened in this really dramatic event. You will soon discover that this event resonates with many other nightclub fires that happened in the last 20 years. I'm going to show some example, and we are going to try to learn from it and see similarities between the Swiss fire and other fire that happened all around the world. So let's start with the ignition of this fire. Many of us have seen a lot of uh, image and picture from the web. This image seems to indicate that fireworks once again ignite a new fire in a nightclub. And you will be surprised to see how many times similar stuff has been happening in many other major disasters all around the world. We have been also watching many videos showing how the fire rapidly spread all around the building. There was highly combustible material apparently on the ceiling, some proving foam material that ignite and facilitate the spread of the fire through the ceiling. It seems that uh, this combination of uh, material and ignition allowed the fire to spread so quickly, trapping many people. Many people have been discussing about uh, the flashover. And I want to use a simple experiment from the NIST repository to show what is a flashover. This example from NIST shows that uh, a flashover is a phenomenon that uh, changes the full dynamic of a fire. At the beginning of a fire, you will see that the fire is localized on a single item. And as the fire spread and starts creating a hot layer on the ceiling, you will see that this heat it will start decomposing, like here, the couch is start decomposing because of pyrolysis and all of a sudden when the temperature will reach 500 600 degree what is going to happen is that the full room is going to be on fire there is no way to survive in this really extreme situation as i mentioned before there is a long history of uh, fire in nightclubs and many of them were ignited by fireworks or pyrotechnic material in article that I wrote with my colleague Milai Dagani on the conversation. We show this data that highlighted that nightclub fire are spread all around the world. It's not something that happened in a specific area or in a specific region. They have been affecting many countries and many communities. The data show hundreds of people that have lost their life during this really terrible accident. And I create an overview of uh, different fires that were ignited by pyrotechnics or fireworks. You can see in all this video that the script seems to be the same over and over with the fire spreading to the ceiling and then spread to all the environment, creating so much devastation and many loss of human life. The Station Nightclub fire is one that has been extremely investigated in the USA by different uh, groups. And this fire took the life of 100 people in the USA. As you can see in the image, this fire started from the stage where a rock band was performing. As you can see in this simulation, the fire start on the stage and triggered the evacuation of uh, many people that were inside this nightclub. Let's go and see a close detail of what happened in the ignition area. This nice documentary shows an overview of the location of the pyrotechnic material and old sparkle managed to reach an inflammable material, once again acoustic foam panels. Once they catch fire, the enable the fire to reach the ceiling and spread all over the place. Of course, we have been using material from this previous disaster to do more investigation. This paper is one of these examples. And if you go and start reading the, the scientific material out of this work, you will recognize a lot of stuff that we have seen in the Swiss fire. So you can see that there is already a body of research analyzing how a sparkle can affect 
a foam material and ignite it. This is another example of a large scale uh, investigation done by NIST that uh, reconstruct the full uh, dimension of this stage with uh, similar material to the one that we assume that were in place in that fire. And you can see that uh, within a few seconds, the fire is gonna overwhelm the full space. I'm gonna speed up this video. If you wanna bocce and Carly, you can go to the NIST website. You can see that the fire spread uh, quite quickly creating a really hot layer of smoke right at the top of the environment. And you will see that uh, within a few seconds, the environment is going to be completely overwhelmed by the fire, creating really untenable condition for any human to survive. Today, we have also computer simulation that use computational fluid dynamic to make simulation help us understand better what happened in this disaster. This is a simulation of the same stage done by NIST using the, the really famous tool developed by NIST itself called Fire Dynamic Simulator. In this case, you can see a reconstruction of uh, the fire. And you can see that these uh, simulation tools can be used uh, to understand the fire spread through all the material and create a really nasty environment. You can see that these uh, tools are capable to simulate both the spread of a fire and the development of smoke and the spread of smoke through the full environment. I managed to find online some preliminary simulation using the exact tool, Fire Dynamic Simulation by NIST. In this case, it's an example coming from Italy. The Fire Dynamic Simulator by NIST was used to replicate the fire in the Swiss nightclub, showing the location of the fire and showing how the smoke spread through all the environment within a few minutes. So it's a uh, Reconstruction that, of course, is biased by all the lack of material that we have today. In fact, even the author stated that this cannot be used for forensic analysis. We actually need information about the actual geometry of that space, the actual material, before having clear understanding of all the smoke and the fire spread through all the environment. If you want to look at more detailed explanation of this simulation, there is a really interesting video published by Joe Pop, another Italian media, that provides a description and uh, explanation of how the fire ignite and how the smoke spread through all the environment. This video shows us that within a few minutes, the full environment got overwhelmed by smoke and fire, making the condition safe for any human trapped in this environment. Let's go and focus on the evacuation and what we can assume in terms of evacuation dynamic of this environment. What I managed to find on, uh, on the web is the geometry of this space. You can see that there are three enclosed environments. There is a basement level where we saw all the video of the ignition of the fire. And then you can see that there is a connection between the basement and the bar area on the ground level. And after this enclosed environment, there is a second enclosed environment that is the terrace, and after the terrace, there is the way out, the outside street. I found many different sources showing uh, the layout of this environment. At this stage, it's a bit confusing to figure it out exactly what was the layout, especially in the basement area. This is an example of CNN, and this is another example from uh, Corriere della Sera, an Italian press, which seems to indicate that there was a second evacuation exit but we don't have clear understanding if there was actually a second way out. Assuming that the only way out was through the stairs and then through the bar area, the terrace, and then the street, we can identify at least three possible bottlenecks that they could have created congestion during the evacuation. The first bottleneck is uh, the really beginning of those stairs. The second bottleneck is the connection between the bar area and the terrace area. A final potential bottleneck was the one at the real end of this enclosed environment. So based on this reconstruction, this is the most likely pathway that should have been used to evacuate this enclosed environment. Let's go and focus on risk perception and the response observed in this evacuation. It's not uncommon that people don't evacuate as we have the ignition of a fire. There is always a time gap that we call pre-evacuation time. And this pre-evacuation time might change in terms of duration depending on what is the risk perception of humans involved in this accident. 
In this video, you can see the people inside the fires try to extinguish with their clothing, and there were many of them taking video using their smartphone. They are not evacuating straight away. And it's something that we observe in many other fires. There are many other factors that can affect the response of people. It can be intoxicated, like in a nightclub, especially if they've been drinking before the event. There is an attachment with the area, especially if you have been paying to enter in a space and you have been paid for food or drinks, you might not be really keen to get out because you have an attachment to the money that you spend inside the building. Of course, social interaction is another important factor. People might affect each other. People might not be keen to evacuate because they observe others not doing so, feeling like the space is safe and underestimating the exponential rate the fire can go to from there. Another factor that may affect the response is also the weather outside, especially if you know that outside the weather is not really nice. People might want to stay inside, try to understand if the situation gets under control before starting evacuating. Identify different videos that show how people were evacuating from a different area. This is a video showing the evacuation through the stairs. You can see that the person was in the basement realized that the fire was getting too big and then evacuating using the stairs. So you can uh, get a sense of how small was the environment and how many people were in there. A nice top view of the exit of the nightclub is the one provided by the Times. Here you can see the stairs outside the main door that we have seen in many videos. And you can see from this video that that exit got really overwhelmed. And it seems that people got stuck and you can see other from outside opening other area from the terrace to allow people to evacuate from this disaster. Having overwhelmed exit is not something new. This is an image that comes from the Station Nightclub fire in which we see a similar condition with a great high density and congestion to one of the exit out of that nightclub. Similarly to what we do for fire, we have also tools that allow us to simulate an evacuation dynamic of a building. Those tools are called evacuation model. This is an example from the Greenwich Group, an implementation of one of the very famous evacuation models called Exodus, showing a simulation of the Station Night Club fire. So you can see that there are several agents that represent the humans and they are going through the evacuation exit. So you can see that they are moving away from the stage and try to use the evacuation exit. And at some point you will see them using also windows to evacuate from the environment. Many of the existing evacuation models rely on many data that has been collected from all around the world that help and understand the dynamic of people and the flow rate that we can observe from door when there is an evacuation. This is just an example of a different bottleneck experiment done at Ulich in Germany. And there are many other experiments that have been investigating not just the bottleneck situation, but also how people choose between different exits. This is an example from my colleagues from the University of Melbourne that ran several experiments to investigate how people choose between a different exit. Today, we have been also using virtual reality technology to create really dangerous situation, expose people to them and understand how they make decision and how different factors may affect their final decision of an exit. Going back to the simulation from Greenwich, you can see that at the really end of this uh, simulation, you can see a lot of agents that get incapacitated. And how can we predict how many people will be incapacitated during a fire? This is possible by linking the results from a fire simulation with the results from evacuation simulation. In fact, if we are capable to estimate the dose of different compounds that get inhalated by a human, we can make a forecasting about likelihood of intoxication. This is done by using a model called FED and it stands from fractional effective dose. And you can see that is a ratio between the dose of stuff inhalated by people divided by the those that can create incapacitation and death. In this model, we can include a lot of different nasty material as well as the low level of oxygen and make an estimation on 
incapacitation for every agent. So there is also an interesting document that I'm gonna highlight here that shows you what it means with different level of Fed. So you can see that a level of 0 0.3, we will have about 11% of people that might be incapacitating and not able to evacuate by itself. This is a threshold that you will see in uh, many different regulations all around the world. And you can see that when the Fed is way above three, there is almost 100% certainty that a person will be incapacitated. So as you can see, there is a lot of science that can help us understanding past accident. And I assume that many of these tools will be used to investigate what really happened in the tragic night of the 1st January 2026. And I want to reiterate on something that we can afford as a society is to be brave enough to start banning pyrotechnics and fireworks in an enclosed environment. I want now to leave you with a simple video that shows a full-scale experiment of the station fire with sprinkler and without sprinkler, just to show you that we have engineering solution that can help us preventing the spread of fire. The only things is left for us to do is now to pray for the victim and their family and wish a speedy recovery for all the people injured in this major disaster. Bye from now.